So today we're going to be drawing this little barn, uh, the reference photo by Duncan McNabb is available on Unsplash or you can head over to my website, there's a link below in the description. Uh, if you go downstairs and look at that in the description, follow the link to my website and then um, you can download the image from there. I like these little images, these really sort of simple uh, images where you have a tree and a building. Um, I think they're somehow less intimidating than doing big landscapes with lots and lots of features in and the primary um, reason behind my channel really is to get people sketching, is to get people creating and, and to try and hopefully get rid of some of that fear that people have that stops them really enjoying art. I know too many amazingly talented artists who um, who seem to live in fear of their own talent in a way. So anyway, uh, yeah. So this is pretty straightforward in terms of perspective. It's uh, it's quite a f uh, quite a uh, you're not too close to the barn, and obviously, if you get quite close to houses and things, you will see a lot more perspective in them. So. Uh, that, you don't really have to think about that. All the horizontal lines are sort of horizontal, if you know what I mean, and the vertical lines are vertical. There isn't much distortion in that that shape. So as you can see here now, I'm starting to sketch this in with my trusty rotary mechanical pencil. Um, people have asked why I use a mechanical pencil and, and not a, an analog one. Um, well, it's primarily because I like a pencil to be sharp. Um, this one particularly is um, has an interesting mechanism where when you press down to use it, it will spin the the core. So obviously, if you use a mechanical pencil, the nib um, is always sharp. You know, it's uh, it's not like a a pencil where the inside gets. You know, you have to keep sharpening it. So that's one thing. Um, I tend to find that you get when you use a mechanical pencil because you have thin lines uh, and it doesn't get wide, you know wider over time it tends to be less messy uh, and I think particularly if you're you know rubbing with the back of your hand over the the page um, I also can't be bothered to sharpen pencils <laughs> it's very lazy isn't it but no I'm not a big fan of sharpening pencils um, now the other nice thing about mechanical pencils is often there is a rubber on the other end as well so if you forget to take one with you or something at least you've got something else there. Uh, right so you may recognize this pen which is one of my favorite little sketching pens it's my little Kawako Sport. It's an extra fine nib um, now if you press down on it there's a tiny bit of flex so you can get a slightly wider line and also if you flip it over and actually sketch with it backwards you can get a very thin line because the the nib actually is, has a ball uh, underneath it if you know what I mean like a little bulge on the end and using it this way or the conventional way with the you know the silver bit upwards um, that ball will come into contact with the paper but if you flip it over the other way it's uh, it's a lot sharper and you will get finer lines. One of the things that's interesting about sketching trees is is it's really a fine line between very detailed and um, and just sort of rough shapes. It's it would be great to be able to sort of draw in every line, every single twig. But to a certain extent, you know, the whole thing about this type of sketching, this line and wash and um, sort of urban sketching type vibe is is that it, it is somehow more truncated you know it's a more of an abbreviated style so what I'm trying to do is 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 catching the main form of the tree here and then my intention was very much to uh, paint in some more details it's kind of easier sometimes if the trees have a lot of foliage on them because then it, it's more of a solid shape So here I'm very much just sketching in the the sort of parameters, you know, the 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 boundaries, the edges of the uh, of the actual barn here. 
you might have heard me say pre in previous videos that every single mark making um every single mark you put down is an opportunity to sort of add texture so even actually with these marks you know i could be describing the texture of the stonework i could be um hinting at you know some shadow by putting some cross hatching in but often what i'll do is is because it is a process of sort of building layers often what i'll do is i'll initially sort of put out the zone and then go in with a thicker pen afterwards and add uh, add some of those details with a slightly thicker pen you can see i'm kind of doing it a little bit around the door where uh, even just with the initial line work i'm trying to show that there's a little bit of texture in the stonework there So there's no reason why you couldn't um, go in and paint this and then put the line work in afterwards. There, I have done a tutorial like that of a station where I've done the done the watercolor first. I just personally quite like the idea of um, quite tight, neat, uh, and descriptive mark making, uh, and then on top of that, some quite splashy, loose color. It's always I've always liked that style. Um, I think it has a, a bit of an effortless feel, which can look, can look confident in a way it looks, yeah, and it also it's it's really fun. So as I'm sketching these chimneys in, I'm trying to add a little bit of, uh, a little bit of detail in the marks. So in those lines, I'm not just doing straight lines. I'm uh, trying to add a little joggle or a little bend. So once you have the, the basics down, once you have these areas zoned out, you know, we've got a line that goes around the roof, we've got a line that goes around the window, you can start looking at those areas in more detail and start to look at how those areas visually tell their story. You know, are the, is the dark areas, is the light areas, is the patterns, is the moss on there? Um, now this old barn, when I'm... I'm trying to show here some texture on the roof. Uh, but I don't want to draw every single tile in because then it will look too flat and too uniform. You could do that. And I, I, I never want to tell you, you know, what style to paint with or, or how to do, you know, how to do any drawing. But my style is not necessarily about uh, painting every single tile. And certainly it's, if if it's economy of sketching then you can you know quite quickly you can show texture without actually getting bogged down with too much detail so it looks like i'm having a break here from um uh, from sketching the building and, and trying to add in a little bit of um grass in the foreground here and again i'm using the the initial line work to add some texture i know this is really uh quite cartoony but i think i like that sometimes i quite like that style sometimes i'm a big fan of sort of peter sheila and that sort of thing so really there's looking at this now i mean you can go in and you can add you can add lots more texture but i i honestly think Probably some uh, some of the brickwork, particularly if you look at the stonework on the on the, the reference picture, you can see that there's quite a lot of dark bricks, and they do really stand out. It's a beautiful colour. It's a kind of honey to um, sort of burnt umber. Um, yeah, it's very nice. I don't know where the barn is. It could be Scotland, I guess. It looks like it's got that sort of style about it. If you wanted to do this, 
a lot of this detailing with just purely watercolour. Obviously you could, I mean you could do the whole thing in watercolour. Um, but the the whole, there's a kind of vibe with, with line and wash technique where there's a balance between the line work and a balance between the paint. And you can really play with that. I mean you can, you know, you can have you can have drawings where you have whole areas that have no painting and you know let the um let the viewer fill in those areas so you can sort of subvert the form if you know what i mean um but personally i think it's nice to get a balance and to get a feel for that balance before you you know before you you necessarily uh you know do crazy bold things Now your view of uh, how this is balanced, you know, might be different from mine, and that's the fun thing about art. Um, there is really no right or wrong way. I get, I often look at the the pictures that I do on here, and I think, you know, do um, do do people like it? You know, do people like this kind of art? You know, is this something that people would put on the wall? Do they look at that and they think, oh, that's cool, I want to be able to do that, or do they look at it and think? You know, oh, I really, I really don't like that. Oh, you know, whatever. Ultimately, I'm enjoying doing it, and that is, again, probably the more important message than this is the best kind of ink to use or this is the best kind of watercolor. Uh, because if you get something from it and you enjoy it, I mean, God, you're a long time dead, aren't you? You know, you've got to find something in life that gives you some joy. So on that cheery note, I'll talk to you a bit more about what I'm doing here. So instead of going on like a wet in wet where I would wet the paper, um, I'm actually just going straight on with some, a really, uh, a wet wash. And then um, as it's becoming a little bit more diffuse, you can see, because I'm being quite rough with the way I'm applying it, it's giving quite a little bit of texture, which is quite nice. The, um, obviously the, the sky in the reference is very flat. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of just flat blue skies. I think if you mask them off, they can look quite nice. Um, and I'm doing a bit of splodging. I like a bit of a splodge. I'm not really sure why I actually sort of added that in there. Um, I mean, there's absolutely no reason why you... Because there's very little white on the barn and there's very little white in the tree, then there's no reason why you couldn't just run that blue all the way across, but... I've just not gone round the um, the barn. So, just to be controversial here, I'm going initially. I'm going in with quite a dark, um, quite a dark wash here uh, as a kind of layer. Well, normally I would I would go lighter. I would look at what the sort of highlights are in that grass and and start with the highlights and then work to dark. You know, start light, work to dark. But here I'm, uh, I'm going with something slightly different. I love that green. It's a really lovely sort of dark olive colour. It's very nice. The green on my, my palette is, is a sap green. It's a Daniel Smith sap green. But at all times I really would encourage, particularly beginners, to, to mix their own greens. Uh, you've got a yellow, you've got a blue. Just have a play. Add in a little bit of burnt umber add in some of the browns see how that changes it you know add in some uh some reds or oranges and purples and that will mute the greens um you can have a play with um yeah with with different colors and just and just see how they work so what i've done there is um i've added a bit of natural sienna there's that background color uh, and I'm kind of just muting that a little bit and then putting in um, just a little bit of a wash on the, the house. Now what I've done now is I've dried that with the hairdryer, which means that I can go in now and it's not all going to get diffused and the paint's not going to go everywhere. It'll stay within its little wet area. Otherwise, because the sky was wet, that would have ran into um, this grey would have all merged with that blue sky. See, what I did there is I did a lovely, interesting line of paint and then I went and filled it all in. I didn't need to do that. Uh, so I kind of missed an opportunity there. 
I quite like that broken line, that the first line that went down. There's an awful lot of um, painting techniques where you can kind of, again, you can sort of truncate the way you put paint down, actually. If you get some rough paper and you get a semi-dry brush, and what I mean by semi-dry is get it wet with paint, and then just touch it onto some um, onto some tissue, and then you rub that run that brush over the paper, you'll see that eventually the line starts to break up and you get a broken line. And that is what I think is most commonly known as like a dry brush technique. Um, and I really enjoy, you know, some re you can get some really beautiful, simple effects using dry brush technique. But all those things you kind of stumble across as you, you know, the more you paint um, and the more you play and just keep experimenting with stuff here. Um, because I've gone in and I've used this gray for the the roof I've gone straight in and dotted it into some areas on the wall um, so I'm really trying to every bit of paint that I've put on whether it's for the uh, the tree or you know whether it's on the ground I've tried to use it in the building as well because it's just it's quicker you know so really I would say I quite like that as it is there and I would be tempted to put in a couple of splashes of yellow or something in the grass as like a colour highlight, like a to lift it, or maybe the red chimney pot or something. But I could have left it like that. I quite like the muted, simple washes where they are quite sort of plainer. Uh, I think that can work really well. But yet I continue. I think really what I really want to capture in this is the is the beautiful stonework because that's the sort of hero of the image really i want to try and get in some of those different colors um some of the different tones it's a bit of a patchwork um you look at it initially in the reference drawing and it it can look like one tone it's a sort of pinky brown but obviously the, you study that closely like i guess like the tree or even like the grass you know is there is different colors in there So because this is still wet, um, the building, when I'm dabbing in different colours, it's you can see they're becoming softer. I apologise for the um, the wobbles on this one. I, I think I had a slight problem with the camera and the, the my vague tripod setup this day. I'm sorry about that. So what I'm doing here and. I, this was an experiment is I, I have a, a, a stick um, and literally is a stick with a sharpened end and what I've done is I've mixed up some very dark paint and I'm trying to draw in with the pointy stick some of the texture that's on the tree uh, this was an experiment uh, it's uh, not a wholly successful experiment I'll be honest uh, it didn't really work very well um, but it's really it's good to keep trying stuff and I'm not really afraid of trying stuff on video and saying well you know that didn't really work out because um, what's the point of me saying to you guys you know I'll oh, give this a go you know it doesn't matter if it doesn't work or it doesn't turn out the way you want you'll learn loads from it it's about process it's not about results you know all these things when I'm not actually having a go at that myself <laughs> again I'm sorry about the camera work here I should have locked the focus um so for me, well, why, why hasn't this worked? Well, it's it's worked in the sense that I enjoyed doing it and I learned something from it. It didn't work in the sense that I think the uh, the line works too heavy. It's too, yeah, it's it's just too heavy. I think a grey fine liner perhaps would have worked better, or uh, actually using a pencil, which is what I I, I go to in the end. Um, that tree also could have been quite beautiful if it had been quite delicately drawn and then left unpainted that would have been quite a nice little foil to the bright colorful house you know like a sparse bone tree or something uh yeah but it's all good fun i just the uh, camera work is annoying me sorry <laughs> i'm gonna have a sip of coffee and uh yeah So in terms of values, you can look at the painting 
on the right and look at their reference on the left and you can clearly see that the reference on the left is there's some of the 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 details are more saturated like the the grass if you want a true color representation obviously take a photo but you can you can work and you can add layers in and you can add depth uh, um and you can get really close with watercolor you really can uh, but it just depends on on what you really want to achieve uh, i like a bit of a rough sketchbook look um and if it's uh you know if it's a uh a dry day or a hot day and you're out sketching i always try and sort of capture some of that feel and some of that vibe so as i said before i kind of relented here and and went back with the old um pencil to add in some of those details and then a rig brush uh, this one is really not behaving itself as you can see it's it's gone a bit electrocuted <laughs> it's not great just as a little tip you can actually sort that out if you get some soapy water and um well just some soap actually and rub it on the bristles get the and the brush will stick back together and store it like that for a little while till it dries and then you can actually um you can actually fix those brushes that way which is another trick i've learned from youtube okay so we're on the home straight with this really last sort of five minutes where i'll be um looking at shadow and uh looking at how to sort of add to those last few details that really do tell quite a lot of the story actually um, one of the things that i can't quite figure out about this image <laughs> it sounds mad but if you i put the shadow on the tree on the right hand side and yet the primary shadow on the building <laughs> he's on the left hand side so obviously um there's something weird going on there uh I think that might be, uh, yeah, again, my artistic interpretation. But, I mean, had you noticed that? That's the other thing. Had you noticed? And I am exaggerating slightly some of the shadows on the door and the windows. Um, just again to try and show the story that there is, you know, the windows are slightly recessed. They do sit a little bit further back. Now the other thing is, am I going to forget to to actually um, paint in the chimney on the right hand side? Maybe I do. Just kind of the, the jeopardy. It's it's quite amazing. So I'm I'm revisiting some of the color that I've chosen to for the reeds in the foreground there. I think they could really do with some green in there, like some really dark green in in the foreground. That would be nice. I can't. I don't know whether I do that or not. And uh, I feel a little bit like the tree is also sitting almost a bit proud of the landscape. I need to bed the tree in. It's funny when I record a little voiceover for uh, for these videos that um, when I did the video like a couple of weeks ago, the reason why I don't do it all at the time is, you know, having a young family and being relatively busy and having a busy household and not having a studio to work in means that... Uh, a lot of this is done on my dining room table which i you know i've not I'm at all embarrassed about saying that it's you know it's pretty humble the this sort of setup i have at home for this kind of thing um so it's actually easier to record a voiceover when it's quiet um and also another bit of complete honesty sometimes when i'm painting it's it's hard i do it sometimes i will record concurrently sometimes but um yeah i also do get a bit disturbed sometimes by my own breathing sounds and snorting and uh, the, the weird sounds that humans make when they think no one's listening uh, but anyway yeah so i i like a bit of variety of line thickness in my art and my design background we were always taught that um you know your boundaries, you know, when things are moving away from you, uh, or it should be darker, you know, it, it'll help it stand out on the page. 
Um, so I do tend to go in and put in some big lines. I like some line variation, I think, is, is a really nice thing in pictures. Personal preference. I'm going to do that chimney. I'm not, am I? <laughs> oh, it's funny. So what would have been lovely in that foreground there would have been some green, you know, some really rich greens. Uh, are you going to do the chimney? Are you going to do the chimney? <laughs> oh, now I'm putting in some splashes. Again, this is a style thing. I personally like it. It adds just a bit of fun texture. And a lot of people, you know, might not. Or will see it as the obvious blatant affectation that it is. Um, but uh, I like it. I think particularly if it's a strong contrasting colour and you can put like a colour, way there we go. <laughs> and relax. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's good. It's not bad, not bad for a, um, a 25 minute play. Yeah, I'll take it, I'll take it. I'm not signing it, obviously. So thank you for stopping by again, having a look at that. Hopefully you'll have a go yourself, it would be great. And also send me some, um, email me some uh, uh, Doug J. Uh, well, actually, I'll have a look at my website, my email's there. Um, there's going to be some new pictures, some new art being uploaded to my website for sale. Originals, you know, not they're not expensive. So have a look, and um, anything you you know that you purchase will obviously support the channel. And um, yeah, like and subscribe and all that jazz. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. You have a great day, and yeah, keep drawing, keep sketching, and just keep creating. Bye bye.